Hello, and welcome to our podcast, Where the Dark Corners Are. Hello, hello, I am Vina, and I am your Dark Travels hostess. Tonight, I am joined by the crew. Gang's all here. Yes, sir. Yay. The the cover has five people. Well, yeah. (laughs) The fox (laughs) is here. She's here in spirit. Yes. So, tonight we're, after our Thanksgiving dinners, (laughs) let's talk about cannibalism. Believe it or not, it's happened. It actually happens quite often. Yeah. Mine yeah. takes place on Thanksgiving. Okay, oh, I killed it. Nice. Right. Okay. It's a popular theme right now. Movie, there's two movies out about cannibalism. I know. Well, I mean, it, when I was growing up, we heard about the Donner Party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we also, in a more recent event, was the the soccer team that crashed in the Alps. I think it was... Brazilian, oh, I have no idea. Peruvian, mm-hmm. South American soccer team that crashes in the Alps or no, <laughs> the Alps are in Europe. In the Andes, <laughs> the soccer team that crashes in the Andes. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's pretty far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they literally have to eat their teammates to survive. To survive. So and it's actually in a movie called Alive, which for some reason my father thought it'd be a really fun movie to take me to. <laughs> He's like, "This looks really good." <laughs> I'm like, no, I mean most of these, most of the camel movies usually aren't very good. Is that the right word? I don't know. Well, and then we've seen them in tons of movies. Yeah, tons of movies now. You know, Silence of the Lambs, all so that good stuff. <laughs> I mean, here's the question: <laughs> Could you do okay. it? Nah. You know, oh, it's know. different when it's a survival type thing. Like, yeah, it's different rules. That's if you cool. had you know, to, yeah, you if you have to, it's a survival thing. But well, it's different if they've already died versus you killing them. It's different. Like they say, even the Donner Party didn't actually eat each other. They say that that was glorified by the newspapers. They they really just ate their cattle and their dogs. And it's like, do you start with that and then? Yeah, I'd, I'd oh, yeah. say you, start you with weren't going to start with the dog for sure. Well, you know, so, but uh, I, mean, I would hate killing my <laughs> German <laughs> Shepherd. Did you say? Well, I mean, he's not no. wrong, though. He's not no. wrong. I've, I mean, no. ca- if I have cattle is standard, but then once, you know, once you've exhausted your uh, opportunities. How are you going to take your stuff with you? You're going to do your dog. Then you're gonna I'm do not your touching rat. the dog. If it's survival, the dog. She's going to die of natural starvation consequences. I'm then not. you will be right behind her. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I'm sorry, Oreo. But they say <laughs> that eating human flesh, like there's something in it that like changes the chemicals and people's yeah. brains. Fucks up your brains. That's how come you get tattoos because what? people who like eating human flesh don't like the taste of cats. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I thought well. that I was going a different route. I was <laughs> like, if you have tattoos, <laughs> you're a ca- you're a cannibal. You have a tattoo. They said not. Have I know. A I said <laughs> that that was going a different route. <laughs> different I was right. like, well, excuse me. Where'd you think it was going to go? Uh, as I just said, I thought if you had a tattoo, you were a cannibal. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, that's Only what? cannibals get tattoos. Well, yeah. Way, way to judge tattooed people. I didn't. She, I thought you she was about to I, judge. I'm about to jump on that train. But like, yeah, <laughs> fuck them tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, I would not eat my dogs because, I mean, they're my people. My kids grew up. I don't want to do it. <laughs> None of this is saying want to do it, but if I'm in the fucking Andes Mountains and all I got is a little chewy, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. Tonight? I, don't I'm not me. saying I'm not going to be crying while eating them to, to flavor my meat, but <laughs> <laughs> you, so, you taste so right. good. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that to chewy. Maybe the other one, but. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't mind, though. I'll go first because yeah, yours it. relates more to Thanksgiving. I feel like more. 
more Jordan. better. Yeah, what does Jordan relate to? Huh? Eating people. Eating people? <laughs> 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 Where do they eat them? <laughs> oh, uh, you want me to spoil it right no, away? No, I oh, want to okay. hear it. Okay. So, obviously, tonight the topic is about cannibalism. And the polar bear and Samantha have a couple of stories they'd like to share. Because we're with, awesome. R- right, okay. Because we came prepared. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just keep stabbing uh, that. I heard, I heard, end quote, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> As he looked you in the eye. Yeah. yeah. Looks, looks you right in the he eye. Said, right in the eye, so uh-huh. let's get it on. <laughs> so we'll start with the polar bear first. <laughs> so my story is actually very different from having to survive uh, having, you know, to eat flesh to survive. It's actually explores a little underground cannibalism community. Underground so. cannibalism uh, community? Is that like even a thing? It's like it, there's there's a whole community of people that want to eat people for pleasure. And there's uh, also people that want to be eaten for, like, sexual or, you know, out of body experience type shit. Okay, but and it's not like we're talking actual cannibalism. We're not talking an act, a sexual act. We're talking actual cannibalism. Yes. Okay. So my main character, his name is Armin Muse, and they actually labeled him the Master Butcher. That's his nickname. If you want to look him up, Armin Muse was born December first, nineteen sixty one, in Germany. I actually watched this video. There's an interview with him on YouTube, which where I got most of my stuff. It's actually pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I guess he talks about everything, and he. And How are we talking creep ass cool or? Yeah, yeah. Like, like you could you could tell on his face he doesn't regret regret a damn thing. <laughs> anyway. Hashtag sorry, <laughs> not sorry. <laughs> yeah, not sorry. <laughs> so, in an interview with Armin, he talks about his life. He says that he had a fairly happy child until he was about eight years old. At the age of eight, his most traumatic memory was that his father abandoned him. He says that he remembers his father getting into the car with his two stepbrothers and driving off. Armin says that he tried chasing the car and to no success. He was uh, left standing there alone. So, and that was the single incident that pretty much created the monster. That triggered the monster within. Yeah, he had he had you know two stepbrothers that were from his dad, and his dad took them w- with him and then just left him with the mom. His mom's name is Waltrude Muse. So, however, he felt completely alone. Like, even though she was there, she was very controlling. Very, you know, there was a reason that dad left. In his I- interview, he talks about how lonely he was. His loneliness drove him to create an imaginary friend, another boy who would stick with him through thick and thin. This was enough for a while. As he so, uh, side note. Yeah. <laughs> this just made me think of this, because one of my brother's favorite stories about me is that I used to have an imaginary friend oh. named Michael, What's and up, he, died. <laughs> oh, he died <laughs> on his bike. He got in a car accident, which actually is normal. Like Kids make imaginary friends, right? And then something happens to them oh, because they don't need them normal anymore. To kill them off? I'm not sure. I mean, okay. my <laughs> boss is pretty sure I'm a serial killer, like but I mean, <laughs> they normally disappear. Sounds like lazy writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hit a parked car on his bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you might, something might be wrong with you. Who kills no. your imaginary best friend? No, Maybe he's an also asshole. <laughs> from my mom telling me this. Like, I don't remember killing him off. I remember him being existent, but I don't know. I don't know. I. I would put nothing past me. There's a red balloon and a drain, and <laughs> right. he just vanished. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> that was a random side note. So as years passed, Armin became a teenager, and puberty hit. He developed you know, certain desires that he would fantasize about with his imaginary friend. But not only did he have sexual fantasies with the imaginary friend, he also had the idea that in order for someone to be part of him, he had to consume their flesh. An idea that of com- of consuming another person came from, uh, he says, came from a fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel. You talking about the when the she has to eat to the children? Uh, well, I think I think in the original story, the kids eat her. They they bake her in the oven. Oh, they trick her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they trick her to get in the oven. And I, th- I, 
Don't quote me on this. They ate them too. I think you're right. Yeah, like because they all, all of those original stories are pretty fucked up. Like the little right, they're pretty grim. Yeah, the little yeah. mermaid she turns into yeah. sea foam and all that stuff. You know, was she it a hocus pocus thing where she needed to eat them to stay young or alive? No, I think I she was just hungry. Just yeah, I think hungry. she just ate kids. Just a cannibal in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Well, could you imagine if this is how every marriage was? It's like, okay, I now take you, cut your finger off, because now I have to eat it so I can become one with you. I'm <laughs> part of you. Well, th- and that was, you know, how we talked about something happens with your brain. The research that they did was on this native tribe, and they were eating their deceased... Like relatives y- yeah, or whatever? Yeah, relatives' brains, and they only believed that women could trap the soul or con- contain the soul or whatever. And then later on, they found out that only women and young children... People who have been eating brain were suffering from cer- certain disorders and like neuro neurological problems. Mm-hmm. So well, there's lots of from cultures. the brain eating scenario. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, there's brains. a reason. Yeah, should we eat people's brains? <laughs> <laughs> well, are there lots of cultures that believe like if you eat the heart of some of an animal, you become brave. If you eat the mind or brain of an animal, you become super smart, like a fox or whatever. So I mean, it, it's it makes sense, like. I mean, women eat to their the own lore. placentas. Right, so, I mean, I that's not that on. far uh, off, that's is a pass it? For your, for your mom, just so you know. Well, I don't know, man. We're pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, I, I don't think that that's far away from eating your ancestors' brains because of a tradition. Like, eating your own placenta, that's like, still cannibalism in its own right. No, no, Put no, it in no, a Jamba no, Juice no, smoothie no. machine <laughs> and make it out of there. You'd be all right. Oh no. Some strawberries would be cool. <laughs> yep, hard no. I don't care if you put it in a capsule. I'm not doing it. Yeah. there's And, yeah, there's a word for it. it's uh, auto can- cannibalism eating eating mm, yourself, yourself yeah. yeah so though he had you know these dark desires armin didn't let them show he wanted he went to school he made friends he lived a normal life armin joined the army in hopes that it would get him out of the house and away from his mother the military was where everything went right armin found the sense of camaraderie friendship purpose that he desperately desired the right to kill people <laughs> i mean uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he ever killed, like, in the army. Well, I mean. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Despite his sexual preferences, uh, he even applied to a marriage bureau where he met a woman named Petra. And they were <laughs> actually engaged for a little bit. Their engagement didn't last. And he broke it off. And then he actually th- said, I don't need this. I'm never going to do that again. What's a marriage bureau? No one else wants to know this. Is it like the ma- the catalog for the mail order yeah, bride? Yeah, like it's kind of like a you know, like a matchmaking uh, service. How crazy before, is it? Before you know, before I mean, Match. dot com, <laughs> farmers only. Yeah, farmers only. dot com. I'm sure there was like this Germans place. Germans only. <laughs> <laughs> there so their engagement didn't last. He spent 12 years in the army, but despite his best efforts to be a perfect soldier, he got out and returned home to his mother. In the meantime, his mother was in an accident and developed some disabilities. Armin became her caretaker, and in the interview, he talks about how much work it was taking care of her and how much of a burden she was. He said as soon as he sat down, every five minutes, she would need something else. Armin, bring me some soup or bring me some tea or whatever else. And so after three long years, she passed away from a heart attack. And I wasn't able to find anything that says that Armin killed her or not. I was going to say, did he yeah, kill her? Because you know, he sounds so inconvenient. You assume, right? <laughs> so I wasn't able to find nothing. I think she m- just might have died. And he didn't eat her? He did not eat her. Okay. <laughs> just trying to line it up here. So with her go- gone, Armin was free to do whatever he wanted. But he was completely alone. And that brought back his dark thoughts again. At this point, the internet became his new best friend. With his mom's death, he started looking up dead bodies and a lot of stuff about death, trying to process his grief, pictures, videos, and that led him down the dark rabbit hole of the internet. Does he eat women? No. Okay. Why? I just, a lot of times, like, serial killers, when they lose their mind, it's because they, like, lost their mother or something, you know, so then they'll take it that out on other women or whatever so i was just oh curious yeah. if like that that's who becomes his so i was actually pretty excited to change it up the victim spoiler alert is a man and we al- we always talk about how, how women are victims in in this situation I like it's it. a little i a little have different. a male victim too oh, oh wow. sweet. we killed it all of a sudden you guys want to come <laughs> be the a team yeah <laughs> <laughs> new we best friends around team. here okay you want to get eight 
<laughs> Not in the way I know where this ends, so <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> My stomach is hungry. Oh. It's a mad And, like, don't. You, you heard what happened to the other Michael, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a parked car and bicycle and shit. Broken spine. <laughs> Bina, you got a bicycle around here. <laughs> Dead from the neck up. <laughs> oh, God. So, anyway, the the dark rabbit hole of the World Wide Web led him to a cannibalism site. He said there were so many ads on the internet that there were people offering themselves to be eaten and looking for people to eat them. He started answering some of the ads and meeting up with these people because that was that was ult- his ultimate desire was to eat somebody. So, and he, he didn't, and then that that's the way he, the way he explains it, he didn't want it to be like violent. He wanted their consent. He just wanted the experience. The the look of disgust does not change simply because consent has been given. <laughs> I think I've actually heard this story before. Yeah, it's actually very popular. Mm-hmm. It was on the news. and It does kind of change it a little bit. I mean, it is different than De- Jeffrey Dahmer taking advantage of these people this and cutting their true. heads off and eating them. Like, these people are choosing oh, to do yeah, this stuff. It doesn't it make it yeah, right. I can't even imagine what body part I would want anyone to nosh on. Mm. I'll tell you. Yeah, I can <laughs> tell you too. <laughs> do you just give them like a chunk of your leg because it will grow back? Like how how do you a little to the left, to the right of my hip? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't even know how you give them something and live, you know, and not bleed out. Like you have to be so specific. Mm. Right. All right. So for m- you know, for many of these people that are that had these ads up and he was meeting with, they were just fantasies, you know. They were just talking mm. to talk. Some of them were pretty serious, but they would back out at last minute. Like, ah, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to keep my toes. This just yeah, got I like too my real. Finger. Oh, yeah, I like having those. <laughs> so so they're just role playing, essentially, to this point. You know, yeah, to the point. So one of the men he met with wanted Armin to label his body parts. Like, like with a Sharpie? Yeah, well, he, like he was naked. So what Armin did was he took paper and, you know, and pinned the appropriate body parts names to his body parts like you know leg or thigh pin? yeah you kind of like like With sticky a real pin? Well, like okay, a sticky okay, you know, okay. i don't think he stabbed him because that's all i saw like <laughs> human voodoo doll but like <laughs> they essentially wanted to be labeled like a pig to the th- slaughter type kind of like you can buy meat from a cow what part yeah. of this cow do you want yeah. and that I was actually going with like a cadaver in silent science class cadaver in science class there we go <laughs> yeah and he says that that really excited this guy. That's what he was into. Like, that's, you know, that's what got him hard. So, are you going to comment Hashtag on that? Hashtag no, not I'm my good. life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm invested. I need to know. <laughs> so then later on in the interview, one of the inv- investigators or whoever he was, he was talking about that on this website that th- they found, there were people that wanted to be barbecued. Like mm-hmm. a chicken, and there were people saying that they wanted to be hit with a hammer and then slaughtered. So, I mean, <laughs> whatever you're into, um, you know. But none of them were fit for Armin's particular desire or taste. Or oh, so now he's getting ready choosy. Well, or oh, we're ready to fall picky. through, you know. <laughs> no, he's trying, but he's you know he's trying to live out his ultimate fantasy. You know, he just keeps scrolling. So swiping to the <laughs> left. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> like barbecue, so <laughs> yeah. he said not that guy. So that's you know, that was his life for a while. He went to work, he did the thing and he'd come back and he'd go on the internet and look at some barbecued people and until he found burned ba- barns barndus. Burned barns had a traumatic childhood as well, you know, of his own. At the age of five his mother committed suicide. And he was left with his father, who didn't provide any emotional support. And their relationship completely broke down when Burned came out of came out to his father and s- told him he was gay. So his dad pretty much disowned him. But despite all that emotional trauma, Brent became a successful businessman. However, his dug- dark desires took the best of him. So in 1995, he picked up Jimmy F., who is air quotes, friend, you know, that he had sexual relations with. Jimmy F., he's actually on the interview also. 
said that Burned asked for him to hurt him after they were doing, you know, during their whole intera- sexual interaction. He wanted to be hurt specifically in the chest and genital area. Mm. So Jimmy, uh, you know, also said, so I'm assuming he did it, you know. I'm assuming so too. Because right. it just kind of kept going. So yeah, just keep going. <laughs> <That's just still laughs> <lady>. Stay strong. <laughs> Jimmy also said that Brent wanted uh, for him to hold a knife to his penis. Oh. And at that act, Brent actually got excited beyond compare. Like he was into this shit. <laughs> So it excited him so much that he asked Jimmy to cut it off. <gasps> oh so Yummy. And he went as far as offering Jimmy a bunch of money. You know, he said, you know, I'll, I'll pay you this much. And, you know, Jimmy's like, I'm not cutting your dick off, dude. And uh, <laughs> like, just cut your own dick off if that's <laughs> what you want. Jesus. No. It's a sexual thing. He wanted somebody else to do it. No. Um, and and once that's gone, it's gone. I was going to say, never have a sexual thing again. Tape it back on there. You'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> Some blue pills. Get back in there. What's so. Bob? It's Quit <laughs> slapping the ass. Yeah. going to sew back on being a porno. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and Weenie. He, yeah, he <laughs> offered him money. Oh, he, he went as far. Oh, my Lord. We weren't recording the whole time. I don't know what's happening, but that sucks. And oh, we no, we're good. We're oh, good. We're still recording. Oh, <laughs> just kidding, people. We're Pina, back. really, if that would have happened, I would have got up and left. What happened like, to his penis? <laughs> we're <laughs> what <laughs> happened? <laughs> but, yeah. He, so, yeah. He I'll f- be back when you make your own stories. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck happened, so. Just stay strong, my brothers. You got to find out what happens to Wiener here. Sorry. <laughs> so, he went as far as offering Jimmy, like, all of his possessions, He's like whatever you want, you want my car, you want my drum set, you know, you my want my computer, uh, PS Five, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, he offered everything, and you know, Jimmy's a reasonable guy, so he's like, "No, nah, dude." So, Arwen, our original guy, put an ad on the site called uh, CutMyPenisOff.com. Oh, yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> Fuck, I actually didn't put the website's name. I don't want to know. I don't, don't want to see it. it. Oh, no, oh, I remember. I remember. We're going to be driving people to this <laughs> website. I think this is why you didn't write it down, so you wouldn't <laughs> remember. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was uh, It was the Cannibal uh, Cafe. It was actually, it was kind of clever. It was funny. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <Stupid>. <laughs> and I'll have a little penis with my cup egg. Yeah, can I get macalado? a shot of espresso, blonde, with a blonde wiener in my mouth, please? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So Brent re- Brent reached out to Arwen uh, through the cannibal site and offered himself to be eaten alive. He wanted his dick cut off, and this guy was willing to cut his dick off and eat. You know, and they were gonna eat it. They were actually gonna eat it together. Oh. That was yeah. They're like, oh, we'll do it together. Peanut yeah. casserole. It'll, it'll be beautiful. It's like a lady in the tramp moment with like. <laughs> 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 You're welcome. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to actually get that <laughs> out. Yeah, that was great. Now you got to keep that one. That I'm was a, good. I'm a visual <laughs> thinker, so. Ooh, that was rough. No bueno. You're welcome. So March. <laughs> it's so only okay because it's consensual at this point. Like it is. If, it's if, it was all, if he was just doing this, they it would not be. They were chopping dicks off. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. So March 9th, 2001, Brend and Arwen finally met up in person. Mm-hmm. Um. Brand flew in from wherever he lived at the time, and they went to Arwen's home where they had sex and they played sex games. But the way Arwen describes it is naked twisted. This didn't get Brand excited enough. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't into it as much as you know what he wanted. He almost sounds sicker than the main guy, yeah, right? Right. Like I mean, he well, seems yeah. like way more demented than any of the other people we've heard about. He just so wants far. to feel again. Yeah, that's all he wants. <laughs> <laughs> People, people need it, okay? He's just trying to find so the right one. Mm-hmm. Moment of truth. So there was like there was like a, a long period of time that, you know, they fucked around the house and stuff, and they almost backed out, too. Arwen almost backed out, but then as he was driving Brent back to the airport, he's like, I, c- I can do it. We can do it. He's like, yeah, fuck yeah, we can do it. Mm-hmm. Right. So they go to the store, and they picked up a bunch mm-hmm. of sleeping pills and, like, cough syrup that Brent drank. To make him numb. Yeah, mm-hmm. numb for the most part. And so Arwen, when they get back to the house, you know, and do their thing, they had 
they were like on this table. They, on the video, it, they they go to the actual house, and they showing you like where everything happened and shit. Hmm. And he had him on the table, and he had a knife, and he went to cut it off, and the knife wasn't sharp enough. He had to go get a second knife. So he gets a second knife that's sharper, and it t- in like a matter of you know a couple seconds, he he cut the other dick's dude's dick off. And seconds. They were fucking. They were excited. They they tried eating it raw. <laughs> But it was, it was too chewy no. and like too tough to you know to be able to eat. So while you know Brand <laughs> is there, he, you know he's bleeding. You know, I don't think there was like any like medical thing that they were gonna do. So he no like cauterization. Yeah, no, he's having a blast bleeding out. While Arwen, he takes he takes the wiener, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> th- this was actually kind of silly to me because he throws it on. Oh, the you skillet. silly goose! You yeah. cut off my weenie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Christ. He throws the weenie on the skillet with like oil, but he doesn't just fry the wiener. He like throws in like veggies and stuff. He makes an actual meal out of this thing, <laughs> right? And how, however, no. you know they find out that you know it was too too fresh to cook or you know it kind of shrivels up and it's not edible they try it try eating it he tries eating it and he's like i can't eat this and then he gives it to brand and brand's actually disappointed that he can't eat his own dick that was that's so he's cool with it not coming back what's that yeah oh yeah he wanted all of this okay so and everything, every single moment of this was videotaped. It's a oh, four-hour no. videotape um, that was never released to the public. I'd hope not. Yeah, <sighs> but. So, did he get arrested? So, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> so, they're they're doing this, and it doesn't work, so. The I McWeenie is unedible. I think, yeah, I think he ends up feeding the McWeenie. weenie to the dog or some shit. Oh, God, we'll leave the dog <laughs> out of it. Dog's a twisted fuck, too. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Put the That's your own personal back. prejudice. <laughs> yeah, it's poodles. poodles. Um, so, at this point, Brand is bleeding out, and he's starting to get cold. So, as a gentleman, Arwen draws him a bath, <laughs> and he puts him in a hot bath. And he's drifting. Uh, Brand is drifting in and out of consciousness. He's just... I, I yeah, hope you can't. He's I mean you can't sleeping see a ton pills. of blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's drugged yeah, and he's, he's losing drugged blood. And he's losing blood and he's all fucked. And like at the points that he wakes up, he sees that the bathtub is full of blood, you know, but that gets him fucking stoked too. That's what you know, that's what he wanted. He's he's like, Oh, this is awesome. This is the, the penis ultimate is not coming back. I don't uh, understand this. He's not coming back either though. He's he's yeah, he's he yeah, there there ran this out. no medical uh, this is like no medical suicide. administered at all. So he tries to get out of the bathtub on his own. You know, Arwen being the gentleman that he is, he, fi- you know, care helps him, drags him upstairs into a bed, and he puts him on the bed. And that's where Bran just kind of lays there, zoning in and out of existence and stuff. And then, for like, he tried to get up and falls over or something, and he passes out for, like, the final time. He's just, he's done. So then Arwen go get goes and gets a knife, and he... Like he he actually talks about doing it. And he's like I I couldn't do it the first time, you know, I I because he was gonna he was gonna finally kill him. Yeah, he was gonna uh, cut his throat, and then he doesn't. And he's like, oh, he, he was so beautiful. And then I kissed him on the lips, and and then he finally you know gets the courage to do it, and he kills him. And so was that agreed upon too, though? The death. Yeah, that's the like part the that I don't understand. Killing? I don't I don't know, but. That's what <laughs> they make it seem like, yeah. I mean, I think they I they knew what was coming, but whether right. or not he put him out of his misery or not, I mean, was that consensual? It sounds like it sounds like it was, but yeah, he f- he kills him, and then what he does is he splits the body in half, and he hangs it so it would bleed out, and he washes it with warm water, he cleans it all up, and he gets all the guts out, and then he keeps him. He he puts him in the freezer. He has the excuse me, like a freezer chest. And so, and he's he's actually kind of smart about it, I guess. He he puts <laughs> it all on the bottom. He, he you know cuts it into pieces, and he puts it in the bottom, and he makes like a false bottom in his freezer. And he puts all the hamburger meat and all the pork and stuff on top. And he's good. He gets away with it. And like the boyfriend starts looking, and or uh, Brand actually had a boyfriend at the time, so 
So not only and he's he's a twisted fuck, he's also a cheater. <laughs> 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 the boyfriend starts looking for him, and you know the police investigation has started, and but it's not coming back to Arwen. And throughout the next four months, Arwen occasionally keeps eating Bran Bran's body parts, and he he had a like he thought that was the best thing ever. They said like twenty something kilograms. I don't know how much that, you know, how that transfers into pounds that he's eaten of him. And then you know, just like serial killers, that wasn't w- one act was not enough. So he gets back on the websites and he starts looking for more people to do this shit with, and he gets contacted by a college student, and he's like, oh, you know, he's they're they're role playing, they're doing their little thing, and the college student's like, well how many people have you eaten? You know, and he's like, let's just say you, you're not going to be the first. And it's like, you know, <laughs> and he's like, I have some experience in it. And then let's just say you're not going to be the first. So then the college student actually reports it to the police. Mm-hmm. And after a while, the police get a raid on his house and they raid his house. And it's funny because they, they say that there was a woman on the police force that discovered that that meat at the bottom of the freezer wasn't human. So I'm a housewife. I know what regular meat looks like. Mm. And that's what I get got them to collect all the evidence and everything. And uh, they went they went to court, and the court was actually pain in the ass too because in Germany at the time, there was nothing illegal about eating human flesh. Mm. So... Mm. <laughs> we got to make a rule for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, they don't make a rule until We've it happens. We've killed millions right? of Jews, <laughs> but we didn't think anybody would fucking eat yeah, another human right. being. So he he gets manslaughter charge of eight years in prison. And then after the investigation court's over, he actually gets life in prison. So he's he's still in prison. And they, they interviewed him, I think, in prison. And uh, yeah. But that's our story. So, I mean, you want a turkey for Thanksgiving? <laughs> you want a ham for Thanksgiving? This guy wants another guy's penis for Thanksgiving. <laughs> they didn't tramp, though. Oh, <laughs> no. So bad. Doggy style. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Take it away, Sam. Yeah, so mine's a little bit different. It also has a male victim. It also has a cannibal. Uh, We'll go back to the very beginning of how this all started. It involves a woman named Omaima Nelson. She was born in Egypt in 1968, and she grew up in Cairo. As a child, she was subjected to abuse from her father and experienced female genital mutilation, so apparently it's part of their culture, and they, her aunts and mother, I guess, held her down to perform a female circumcision on her. And... It's my understanding that a female circumcision is the removal of the clitia? Uh, I believe so. I did not really want to look into that. I've heard about it a couple of times. But it does. Some of them, they just, like, sew them up. And some of them, they completely cut them out and remove parts of their body. And whatever whatever they do, it always leads to, like, loss of feeling and loss of sexual desire and all that good stuff. So, you know, they, they sex isn't pleasurable to them, and that's the whole point, is to, like, shame them. They're not allowed to have any type of ownership over their bodies. So, in after enduring all this, in 1986, she, when she was 18, she comes to the United States, and she finds work as a nanny and a model in California. So, it's said that at some point... This wealthy oil tycoon from Texas comes over to Egypt and is like, oh, my gosh, you're gorgeous. Come with me to Texas. So she comes to Texas. She works as a nanny and a model because she is beautiful. So in 1991, Omaima meets Bill Nelson, who was at the bar playing pool. So Bill and her don't have much in common, and I'll talk about their age difference later. um, But they do have a criminal record. So... They both had that, at least in common. Bill used to be a pilot, but in 1984, he was convicted of smuggling a large amount of marijuana into the country, and he served four years in a federal pen. He was released on parole, and he got a job at a company called Cannon Mortgage. So, drastically different. But now we're going to go to, and it's we're going to say fast forward, but it's not that fast. 
Did I miss her criminal record? What did she do? She just got in trouble for petty stuff. So it's that she actually went into like a mall and she was stealing something. And these two female security guards came to stop her. And she almost bit one of their breasts off. Nice. And oh. she kicked the other one in a cro- in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Welcome to America. Jesus yeah, Christ. So. Jesus born. She's a little intense and maybe a little bit of foreshadowing in the fact that she's like that aggressive with someone else's body. But we're going to fast forward a little bit, though not that far, because it's only five weeks from when they meet each other. On Thanksgiving Day 1991, the 23-year-old model repeatedly plunged a pair of scissors into Bill's chest and stomach in their Costa Mesa apartment in California. She then reached for an iron. Omaima and Bill had been married for less than three weeks when she bashed him in the head to death. Oh, they got married, like, right away? Mm-hmm. Oh, Very yeah. quickly. His adult children did not like it because they're so far apart. They did not like her. They didn't really want anything to do with her. It's reported that he had called his daughter and asked if she wanted to come over that Thanksgiving to eat dinner with them, and she said no. But, yes, yeah, so they got very quick. So they met each other, and they got married two weeks after meeting each other, and she killed him five weeks after meeting him. Nice. That's the timeline. It's that quick. Boom. True love. So they say that cheaper than divorce, I hate it. <laughs> especially in <laughs> California, four hundred and like ninety five dollars in six months in one day. Yeah, it's I mean I guess it's easier. Good lord. So as sh- so she stabs him in the chest, and as he's flailing around, she pummels him to death in the head with the iron, and she actually was hitting him so hard and so many times that she broke her own hand. So her reasoning behind all this is that she said that once they were married, Bill was physically and sexually abusive to her and that he would even pimp her out to other people for cash, rent, and in one case, a car. She said that on the day of the murder, so Thanksgiving Day, that he had sexually assaulted her in the apartment and then she claimed that he had tried to rape and strangle her. So in self-defense, she had to grab the lamp and hit him with it before she stabbed him with the scissors. So a lot of this doesn't mesh up. Did he have a history of pimping out women? I, there's nothing about any of that. I mean, he smuggles weed, and we see that, but that's, that's about not it. Not necessarily a correlation there. Right? They, to my knowledge, his ex-wife is fine. So, I mean... So she's basically making this up. It seems like that because, I mean, she's talking about self-defense. However, after he was killed, she butchers his body on the kitchen floor. She takes off his hands and she Mm -hmm. broils them in oil to remove the fingerprints. She sticks his head in the freezer so that she could later break out his teeth because she didn't want them to be able to identify the body. So, I mean, this is very contrived, right? Like, this is not someone that's just like, oh, I'm just going to. It's a lot of criminal minds. Yeah, it's a lot of Netflix murder shows, right? But in 1991, we don't really even have, like, the internet. We don't have TV. We don't have true crime podcasts. We don't have any of this stuff. Like, Where did she learn this shit from? Right? She's so, like, advanced. I mean, this is not a crime of passion. This is very thought out and calculated. Mm. So. She read a book. (laughs) Right. Or two. Yeah. Oh, Jason. Oh, Jason. Look. So then in symbolic revenge, so that's not it, right? So she cuts off his fingers, breaks out his teeth, cuts off his head. She then castrates him. So she said that that's because, you know, she was angry. So anyway, as... (laughs) <laughs> it, it makes sense. I mean, if yeah. it actually did happen, you know, you're not going to do that to anybody anymore. Like your hands, you, know you can't dead. touch me anymore. Well, so your let's face, so you can't kiss me anymore. Yeah, let's balls, compare this to anymore. two different people, right? Like, you have Lorena Bobbitt, who is documented that she has suffered all of this crazy abuse at the hand of her husband, and she castrates him and throws his dick in the field, right? And right, she goes for the thing that hurt her. That hurt her, right? So that does make sense, like Polar Bear is saying. Like, it does make sense if you've experienced all this sexual abuse that that would be the one thing that you go after. But to you do don't put his head in the goddamn freezer right. and remove the teeth. All these other things. Well, and she didn't, Lorena Bobbitt didn't kill him. Correct. And then she told them where the dick was to go get, get reattached. Like, you know, in comparison, there this is someone that's traumatized that doesn't actually want to hurt someone. And then there's this person over here that's very criminal minded methodical yeah is trying to hurt someone so she tried to stuff some of the body parts into the trash and then she fed others down her garbage disposal but it must have occurred to her that she hadn't had anything to eat on thanksgiving of all days (laughs) so (laughs) 
According to court documents, not on Thanksgiving. <laughs> right? She had no food prepared, which is weird. Now let's talk about that for a second. To go back, they invited the daughter over, right? So, and the daughter says no. So they must have been planning on having dinner. So what happened to that food? Did it just never get cooked? Did they never have she it? She went really That's where the fight happened. He probably came home. Where the fuck's the food? And she's like, you're it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. <laughs> well, like you said, she went really local. Oh, gosh. She's trying to get the freshest local food. Local foods. Yeah, so according to court documents, Omaima told her psychiatrist or a psychiatrist that she put on red shoes, a red hat, and red lipstick before preparing her husband. She prepared her husband's ribs with barbecue sauce, put them in the oven, and she said, I did his ribs just like in a restaurant. It's so sweet. It's so delicious. I like mine tender. And that's an exact quote from her. Secrets in the sauce. (laughs) Not this time. (laughs) Baby (laughs) Baby race. So <laughs> we're, we're laughing through our uncomfortableness. So the psychiatrist asserted that Omaima was in a psychotic state when she offered or when she often ate Bill and added that in 20 years of his practice, he had never experienced a conversation with a subject that was so bizarre and so psychotic. So it's also said that the Sunday after Thanksgiving, Omaima mixed her husband's remains with leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Now she has a Thanksgiving turkey. So I don't know. My sources like kind of went all over the place. Uh, Like we said, she tried to dispose of what she could in her garbage disposal before wrapping the remaining organs and body parts in newspaper and putting them in trash bags. She then drove to a friend's house, so some people say it's an ex-boyfriend's house, and attempted to get this friend person, some say it's a he, some say it's a she, they show she shows this person her tra- the trash bags that she's stuffed in the back of Bill's red 1975 red Corvette. And she offers this friend $75,000 to help her get rid of it. What the fuck? Right? I take, some, I take the money. Then I tell the cops, and she gave me $70,000. Right. <laughs> so the friend says no and immediately reports what happened to the police, which is when the investigation began. So the friend must have been rich, too. Right. The authorities sort through the bag from the car as Nelson looks on quietly. And because the body was so dismembered, the police weren't able to identify the remains right away. However, one of the sources that I read said that the only reason that they knew it was human, they couldn't actually, like, tell anything, but they knew it was human because there were tar scars and marks from him smoking on his lungs. And so, like, that's not animal. That's that's the lungs of a smoker. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm. Almost got away with it. Right? (laughs) Didn't clean the lungs. But they couldn't de- determine the cause of death because of the condition of the body. So she took him apart, it sounds like. Pretty much like man who cuts other man in half. <laughs> I mean, there there's Does some big dissecting <laughs> happening. Yeah. We'll go big, I guess. Well, like, call back to our Jack the Ripper. Like, I don't think this is easy to, like, dismember Dude. a body, right? I know it's hard enough to dismember an animal. But, like, I could imagine it's, like, even harder to dismember a human. I guess not. Everyone's doing it. I mean, <laughs> oh, gosh, to that well, level? Jack the Ripper was kind of, like, surgically, they said. But I, I mean, these people, I'm sure, was just, like, a hack and slash. Chop, 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 chop. Well, it just, like, it just makes you wonder, like, I, I don't know. I In my mind, it seems like it's just really difficult. But it, these stories are making it seem like it's easy. I'm like, I, I, I wouldn't know. know. How <laughs> much time did you put into this? Well, I wonder if she did exactly what she wanted to do to her dad, to Bill. You said that her dad abused her. You didn't specify whether or not it was sexually, but it is an assumption on my part that she was sexually abused. And hence, between the circumcision and the abuse, you know, in her mind, this was something she probably formulated to do to her dad. She couldn't do it, and when... You know, she got married to Bill, and he expected a sexual relationship. You but, know, I mean, three weeks after the marriage. Right. <laughs> well, and she's been here now in America for four years at the time of the murder. So she comes over with this oil tycoon, if you believe that part of that story. And then she comes here, and she's, like, modeling, and she's a nanny. And, it, you know, I'm sure she had – it said they – all these sources said that she had multiple boyfriends because she was very good looking. Most of them were older, wealthier men that liked having, you know, a pretty little thing on their arm. Little trophies. Right. And so that's it seems like that's what she was looking for was like a sugar daddy, someone with a lot of money that would take care of her. But I mean, I 
wouldn't doubt that she had some underlying daddy issues. Yeah, negative daddy male issues, yeah. viewpoints. Okay. All right. Thank God I had turkey for y'all came. I think that's great that it happened on Thanksgiving. Yeah, so I Picked mean they quick. eventually do find out that it's her and they go in there and they said that they found they were missing like 130 pounds of her body. His body. Or his body, yeah, mm-hmm. 130 pounds of his body, so where would it have gone? And, you know, so the prosecution obviously said that she was looking for a sugar daddy and she was trying not to that that why is why she murdered him. She just wanted his money. They were saying it's because she was so abused, so it was self defense. And then she eventually gets convicted of second degree murder and is sentenced to twenty eight years to life at the Central California's woman facility in Chowchilla. Chowchilla. And I mean I, that's like one of our only right female prisons, that one. There's three, three? Only there's couple, three in California. Three? And there's one in there's Dublin, which is a federal one, but I mean there's not very many of them and Chowchilla, to my knowledge, is pretty popular for women, but she was uh eligible for parole in two thousand six and was denied because she's still a unpredictable and serious threat to to public safety. Then she remarried in prison to a man in his seventies, right before her second parole hearing in two thousand eleven. Mm-hmm. And during that five-and-a-half-hour hearing, she insisted that she was not a monster, pointed out that she had never hurt the man she married while incarcerated, even though in the trailer where they had their conjugal visits, there were knives in the kitchen. Nice. But shockingly, she (laughs) she she didn't, and she didn't eat him either. So once again, shockingly, she was denied. And, uh, yeah, she says that she's a changed person who is looking for love in all the wrong places. But she has Did she find Jesus on top of <laughs> everything else? She found a strong desire to help others. Oh, Jesus. Rehabilitation at its finest. Right. Well, and since being convicted, she has vehemently denied eating her husband. So it's all very interesting. So regardless, she's not eligible for parole again until 2026, which is soon. However, it's highly probable that she's going to continue to be denied and serve her full term. All right. So cannibalism is not just a man's thing, which is interesting. Interesting. Yeah, we're breaking all kinds of gender (laughs) norms over here. We have a a gay cannibalism (laughs) situation. (laughs) We have a female-on-man cannibalism situation. We are woke, okay? We We are woke. We don't discriminate. (laughs) Nope. Okay. Everybody's fucked up. (laughs) All right. So enjoy your Christmas fiesta. Coming in hot. Right? Like don't eat too people. fast. <laughs> oh gosh! Barbecue ribs. Oh god! I'll never look at ribs the same way. I'll never look at my wiener the same way. <laughs> 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 you ain't going nowhere, little guy. <laughs> Stay close, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, I, buddy. I don't care if it's cold or you're just scared. Just go in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All right. Um, I gotta sleep tonight on that one. <laughs> Stay blessed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's what you, we have for you tonight on to business. Your boy's got a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Been practicing yeah. that, huh? Your boy? Yeah. Yeah, everyone works like, you should make a TikTok. And they're like, what would I say? You want me to sound like this all the time? Hey, guys, it's your boy, Mikey G, with another video. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if you're curious or interested, send us a request. Yeah. If you're already on there, just post. Make some LOLs. Make it worth her while. But in the meantime, if you have a topic that you'd like some of us to cover. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're going to keep coming back to cannibalism because... No, I think you're going to keep coming back to cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, this is your second one, right? Yeah. Well, what was the first one? We it was that one? village yeah, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was for something else. It was wasn't what labeled was it cannibalism. It was the movies that were in real life. It oh, was yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did the green, what's that called? The green river? No. Green uh, room? No, no, no. Uh, the green room is the, w- the one with the neo-Nazis. It's a good movie. The children, of, not children of the corn. Uh, the hills have eyes. Oh, oh that's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I went to look, you know, look this one up, and then, like, a million of cannibal things popped up, and I was like, how am I going to decide? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make, you know, four different stories, four little stories. And I actually started listening to this one. I was like, okay, there's a lot to this one. I could 
I, c- I could throw that out there. Because, you know, we only have two stories. Oh, story. wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Give him a little assignment and think they are, you know, top dog or something. It was, his, it was their topic anyways. It was, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to talk about this. Scary. You <laughs> ask for topics, <laughs> and I throw out the topics, and then... I well, have I fu- to do it. Right, we didn't know we were going to be Lady and the Tramp in it in here. <laughs> 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 but if you have a suggestion other than cannibalism, send us a email at where the dark corners are at gmail.com. Final thoughts, Panda. Got any cool cannibal recipes? You can post it to the page as well. I was going to say that earlier when he was talking about how they were surprised how it cooked. I was just like, well, they couldn't have Googled it, and there's no cannibal cookbook. So, of course, they were surprised. Yeah. Polar bear? Oh, fun fact was that they said that human flesh tasted like pork. Final thought. They do say that pig is one of the most relatable things to us as a human when they practice medical things. Right, 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 right. Makes sense. Samantha? How do you guys feel that he has done two cannibal stories and you guys have done none? Wow. <laughs> pretty good. I'm okay with that. I'm so okay with that. Okay. He's just here to talk shit. Pan- I know. Pandas don't eat this pandas, bro. Right. Polar bears eat other polar bears. Polar bear two, the bunny zero, and she's going to sleep well with that. <laughs> Everyone needs a win. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad for a sick little girl, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So until next time. Please remember, only the few can find the beauty in the darkness, which is why we hope to meet you where the dark corners are. Oh, no, we lost him. Yeah, he lost me. <laughs> no, we lost <laughs> Panda. Oh, we lost are you Panda. Out? Yeah. Panda's gone. That he was saying something and his mic went down. I could hear it. <laughs> I was like, so stop talking because he was okay. gone. Where's your, no, no, where's your cord at? I don't know. I <laughs> it was you the whole time. It's your own fault. I was my own monster. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to put was it back in the stand. There. No, I want to hold it. Okay. <laughs> check, check, check. Mikey G. <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy Mike G here. <laughs>